My gratitude for all who are participating and leading worship today and singing and certainly Elikum, music, Liz on technology and all who have gathered today again. God bless you and happy new year. And thank you, Anna, for the reading of Psalm 27. I want to add to that another text and it is also in your bulletin and that is Lamentations the third chapter, verses 19 through 24. And it reads, and I'm reading from the NIV, the thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in the Lord. The word of God for the people of God in today's message is the power to pivot. The power to pivot. There is a post on social media credited to L.R. Nost, an award-winning author, feminist, and social justice activist. And it reads, life is amazing. And then it's awful. And then it's amazing again. And in between the amazing and the awful, it's ordinary and mundane and routine. Breathe in the amazing. Hold on through the awful and relax and exhale during the ordinary. That's just living, heartbreaking, soul healing, amazing, awful, ordinary life. And it's breathtakingly beautiful. Wonderful sentiment, isn't it? Hear her instructions again, breathe in the amazing. Hold on through the awful, and I know that those who, I'm thinking of Jana, who, who teaches us meditation, you need to keep breathing through the awful as well. And relax and exhale during the ordinary. Miss Noss' words helped me greatly in the midst of my recent awful season. And it is this season of awful that I am just beginning to emerge from that has caused me to look to our sacred text and more accurately to look to God for words of hope that can help us all as we enter a new year. When I sought the Lord in the midst of my awful, God reminded me that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God reminded me that God is indeed faithful, that morning by morning, new mercies I see. I had a rough year in 2021. Most of you know that many of us had a rough year and all of us have had two very strange years and this pandemic is still not over. So among God's recent reminders to me was also this message that God has given us as humans, many amazing abilities and among them is the ability and the power to pivot. God has given so many 
wonderful abilities to human beings. Have you ever thought about that? The, the psalmist of Psalm 139 has, has put that together and helped us think about that. For he said to God, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. God created human beings with so many abilities, even though we are differently able. In general, God has given human beings the activity of our limbs, as well as the ability to see and hear, the ability to think and reason, the ability to do good and to do evil, the, the ability to choose, the ability to be rational and irrational, the ability to be prideful and humble. But among all the excuse me, the abilities God has given us, the primary one I want to focus on today is the amazing ability and the power to pivot. Ah, pivot, a, a word I've heard more in the last two years and counting than any other word among my ecclesial circles. Because as pastors, we've had to do more in the last two years possibly more than any other time in our career as faith leaders, what we've had to do is pivot. We've had to pivot. What do you mean by pivot, preacher? I'm glad you asked. To pivot is to change course, to change direction, to completely change the way you do a thing. And I'll add that by pivot, it is implied that the change happens suddenly. Now that I've given you the definition of pivot, let me use it in a sentence. In March 2020, High Park Union Church, like so many other churches, had to pivot due to the pandemic. In March 2020, we had to pivot. We had to change quickly the way in which we gather for worship. Instead of worshiping in the sanctuary due to the pandemic, we had to pivot and worship remotely. We pivoted at, with about one week's notice to online worship and forever, hear me, changed worship at High Park Union Church. Yes, we did. We forever changed from not being online at all to being on Zoom, Facebook Live, and having a YouTube channel. God bless you, Liz, for your work. And we did that almost overnight. We pivoted for a reason, for the health and well-being of one another. Look at your neighbor on the screen and realize that we pivoted for the health and well-being of one another. And if, if, you, if you ask me, that's a great reason to pivot. Thank you for this illustration, High Park Union Church. Good job and congratulations on the pivot. We did it so well and we could not have done it without each of you. And in the same season, this once in a lifetime but lingering pandemic has given rise to the need for many of us to do as we did as a church in 2020. And that is to pivot. The pandemic and all that has happened in even the past year has agitated some areas in our lives for our own well-being. We may have no other choice but to pivot. Even some of the normal stuff that has happened regardless of the pandemic is magnified by the pandemic. And for this reason, some of us need to pivot. How do you know if you need to pivot? Well, let me restate the reason we pivoted as a church, both in 2020 and even this morning, for the health and well-being of one another. There are times in each of our lives that we will need to change direction, change course, turn and go another way, because staying on the current course puts you or another's health and well-being, including our mental health and well-being and that of others in jeopardy. That's how you know that it's time to pivot. 
You may not realize this, but pivoting is a move that is made in the Christmas story. You see, soon after the birth of Jesus, Jesus' family had to pivot. According to the second chapter of Matthew, King Herod, hearing of the birth of Jesus, wanted to kill him. So the angels of the Lord came to the Magi and to Joseph in dreams. And the angel told the Magi not to return to King Herod and tell him where baby Jesus was, but to pivot and go back another way. Likewise, an angel came to Joseph in a dream and said, get up, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt and stay there until I tell you. In essence, the angel told Joseph, get up, pivot, and do something other than what you planned to do to avoid the wrath of King Herod and to save your very lives. And I don't claim to be an angel, although I've been called that a time or two, but I am here on this first Sunday of the year of our Lord, 2022, to give the same message that the angel gave to the Magi and the same message that the angel gave to Joseph. And that message is that sometimes in life for our own well-being and even to save our very lives, we need to do something other than what we plan to do. We need to change course change direction, we need to pivot and we need to do it relatively quickly. The good news this morning is that God has blessed us with this wonderful ability to pivot. In March 2020, we proved that as a church that we collectively had the ability and the power to pivot, but some of us need to apply that ability to our own lives to save our very lives. Is it you? If you are on a path that seems to be leading to more pain, you may need to pivot. If you are not even really on a path, but you're stuck in a slump, you may need to pivot. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of this pandemic or anything else for that matter, you may need to pivot. If the pandemic has caused some problems that seem insurmountable, if you are depressed or weary or tired and just ready for renewed hope, you definitely need to pivot. The writer of Lamentations today came to encourage us that God has given each of us the ability and the power to pivot. The, the writer of Lamentations demonstrates the power to pivot. He actually pivots in writing right before our very eyes. But before we go there, if you have concluded that I'm speaking to you, the first thing to understand is that yes, you have the ability to pivot, but you are going to have to act on your own behalf and it may not be easy. As a matter of fact, the first step might be the most difficult step. The first thing you need to do in order to pivot is to do what the writer of Lamentations did, and that is to lament. Let's talk about Lamentations for a moment. I believe I told you this before. The biblical book of Lamentations is known as the most tragic book in the Bible. Lamentations describes the destruction of Jerusalem the devastation of its people at the hands of Babylonians, the destruction and devastation believed to be planned and orchestrated by God. Have you ever thought that God was the one causing your pain? Have you ever thought that God was causing the destruction that you are witnessing, that God caused that death or that loss? It's very human to blame the supreme being when there's no other explanation. The writer of Lamentations lamented the destruction of Jerusalem. Then in chapter three, the lament becomes very personal. Maybe even someone from the same community giving their own testimony for it begins, I am the one who has seen the affliction under the rod of God's wrath and goes on for 18 verses in chapter three, lamenting this affliction. 
And then he comes to verse 19 and says, the thought of my affliction that I just ran down for 18 verses and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. In other words, it's bitter and it's poison. He says, my soul continually thinks of it. Sounds like trauma. And it's bowed down within me. Depression and some scholars even suggest he's humbled by the thought of his affliction. To lament is to mourn, to audibly express your sorrow or grief. And we don't only mourn when, when someone dies, we grieve when things change. We grieve when we change. We grieve when our normal changes. Some of us are grieving the very fact that you're on Zoom and that you are not in the sanctuary this morning. Some of us are grieving that the choir does not sing every Sunday. Some of us are grieving the need to wear masks all the time. And maybe we're not grieving. Maybe we've held it in. And we have not allowed ourselves to lament. It's quite possible that when we pivoted in 2020, we did not properly grieve because we thought it would be one week or two weeks, but two weeks became a month and a month became a year and a year has become almost two full years and counting. And the question is, have we stopped to grieve? Someone wants to run from this first step already because lament is uncomfortable. Lamenting may mean crying. We don't like to cry or we're taught not to cry, but even Jesus wept. Some of us are stuck because we have not lamented that which no longer is. Change is so hard because we have not lamented and it involves a process of grieving and many of us avoid grieving because it's messy and we feel out of control and pride may even be the problem. But let me encourage you today that the book of Lamentations in the Bible by the divine inspiration of God tells us that Lamentations is a human function that we should not skip. We all have grief we need to express. What is that for you? I know you're uncomfortable. Maybe it was by God's design that you are in the comfort of your home and you can turn off the screen if you want to so you can lament. I encourage you today for your own well-being that if there is something that has happened in the past two years or any time in your life and you have not properly grieved, it is time, possibly past time, to lament, to express your sorrow, to grieve, to stop holding it in and holding it together, but to cry and to cry out loud that it's natural to do so. It's even biblical to do so. Some of us need a real good cry. Life has changed and you haven't lamented the change. Please give yourself permission to lament. If you're tired of being isolated, please give yourself permission to lament, to grieve, to cry, to moan. It's human, it's natural, it's even biblical. And yes, Jesus did it. So we're gonna take a moment as Ella plays one verse of it is well with my soul. And I'm asking you to take a moment to lament. 
Thank you, Ella, come on. Hear the lyrics. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. I was amazed to find that this song has Chicago roots. The writer Horatio Gates Spafford suffered great tragedy in the loss of one son to scarlet fever in Chicago in 1870. And his remaining four children he lost in a tragic shipwreck. And that's when he penned these words, yes, of lament. But they include, if you listen carefully, his pivot to acceptance and hope. And as you lament, it might take a while. You may need to lament for some extended time, put on your calendar time to lament. But I believe that the very act of lament will eventually help you begin to pivot. The writer laments and something begins to shift, even pivot right in the midst of his lament. Back to Lamentations 3, the writer says in verse 19, and I'm paraphrasing, he remembers his misery, his suffering, his pain. He's reflecting on it and is humbled by it. And that process causes him to pivot as demonstrated by one word. And verse 21 says, but, but this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Whenever you lament, the power to pivot can be facilitated by one three letter word. And that is, but. You know the word, but it's a conjunction that introduces a new clause that contrasts, pivot, contrasts, with what has already been said. Let me demonstrate. I don't have much money, but I have my health. I am sick and tired of COVID, but I'm grateful I'm still here. I lost my job, but there are so many other jobs out there. I'm grieving a loved one, but I'm comforted by the years we had and the love we shared and that I myself woke up this morning. I'm still here and God is still able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or imagine. Our writer this morning demonstrates his pivot by the use of the word but. Hear it again. I remember my affliction, my suffering and my pain, but this I call to my mind and therefore I have hope. The King James Version says it this way, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because God's compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. This is where our great hymn comes from. God has been good to me. The writer is saying, God has been merciful to me. It's only by God's grace that I am here. It's only because of God's goodness and mercy that we are not consumed. And God has been compassionate towards me and towards us. God's mercy are just like the sunrise. It's new every morning. That's just how faithful God is. You see, what's before the but is a recollection of the pain. And if he stayed on that path, he would have continued all the way down. But he shifted, he pivoted to think about recalling the God's goodness over the same time frame. When you lament, I encourage you, get it all out. I had a, a mentor, I have a mentor, Dr. Brad Braxton, and he was talking to me about preaching the, the eulogy of someone you love. 
And he told me as a, as a young preacher at the time that he had to preach his father's eulogy. And before he went out, he got in a room and he lamented. He got it all out. There's no point in holding it in. It's going to come out some way and somehow. And I believe it's the spirit that when we begin to lament, the spirit begins to heal. And somehow we come to that three-letter word, but this I recall to my mind and I have hope. The writer pivoted right before our very eyes. He pivoted from lament to gratitude, acknowledging the goodness and the mercy of God. And when you lament, get it all out. Tell God all about your troubles. Even express anger towards God. God is big enough to handle your anger. And know this, that you have the power to pivot because you have the power to insert a three-letter word, not the four-letter word you might be using as you lament, and that's okay. But when you're ready and when the spirit puts it in you, that it's time to pivot. Replace those four-letter words with a three-letter word, but, and your pivoting will be in progress. You have the power to pivot because you have the power to shift from lament to gratitude, acknowledging just how good God has been. Now, let's be clear that, that this does not nullify your lament. But what it does is ignite the power within you to change course. Because as long as there is breath in your body, you can pivot. As long as there's a brand new day, you can pivot. As long as you can call to mind and reflect the goodness of God, I call those flashbacks of mercy. As long as you can have flashbacks of God's mercy in your life, you can pivot. The writer said, I remember my suffering. It hurts to think about it. I'm consumed by it. And then almost miraculously something shifts. And he says, but this I call to my mind and therefore I have hope. We've got to pivot and we've got to call some things to mind. Call to mind those times God has shown mercy when you didn't get the punishment you deserve. That's called mercy. Call to mind those times when God has shown loving kindness. Call to mind those times when God has simply been faithful. As you look back over your life, that's a good New Year's Day practice. Look back over your life and call to mind those times when God has opened doors for you. Call to mind those times you felt God's hands of direction. Call to mind those times you felt God's hands of protection. Call to mind those times you knew it was God's hand of provision, not only for you, but for your family. Call to mind those times God delivered your ancestors, and if not your ancestors, my ancestors. It's all God, and we can be grateful for that too. The power to pivot is first in your power to get past your pride and allow yourself to lament. The power to pivot is, is second comes from shifting from lament to gratitude facilitated by a three-letter word, but. For the reality is, if you can say but, then you can pivot. The power to pivot third comes from your ability to call to mind the goodness and the mercy and the faithfulness of God. The, the writer pivots right before our eyes, and now he says he has hope. Not only does the writer have hope, but I have hope. And not only do I have hope, but as we enter 2022, my prayer is that you have hope. Why have hope? For the same reason the writer of Lamentations has hope. Hear him. He has hope because the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. You hear that pivot? You know, the writer of Lamentations isn't the only one who pivots. The psalmist for today, thank you, Miss Anna York, Psalm 27, gives the pivot I'd like to leave you with today. Here's the part I want to leave you with in verse 13. He says, I believe that I shall see the goodness 
of the Lord in the land of the living. King James puts it this way, and my professors would get me for quoting King James, but sometimes it just preaches. He says, I had fainted unless, shift, pivot, I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I would have fainted, I would have waved the white flag, given up, maybe even died, unless I believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Your power to pivot is in your ability to believe, not just anything, but to believe that God's not done with you to believe that the best is not over for you, to believe that you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Pivot by giving yourself permission to lament that which has grieved you for a while now. Pivot by transitioning from lament with the word but, then recall to mind God's goodness throughout your life. Pivot by giving yourself permission to believe that you will see God's goodness in this life again. Then allow the pivot to ignite your spirit to ignite your imagination. See, sometimes that, that lament that we won't let go of keeps us bound up. We can't imagine, we can't act, we can't do anything. But when we go through this process, allow it to ignite your imagination, allow it to ignite your hope. Allow the pivot to release you from chains of sorrow and chains of frustration, chains of anxiety into the reality of hope that God, Emmanuel, is with us. And may God surround you with those who will pivot with you, with those who will help you pivot. As a matter of fact, let's pivot together. Happy New Year. God bless you as you pivot throughout 2022. Amen.